Sally Russell. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Hick Talks. Welcome to Helsingborg, a series of podcasts in English designed to demystify the city of Helsingborg for its international residents. In this episode, we'll be talking to Martin Arkel, Communications Manager of the Contact Centre. We wanted to find out about the help and advice the Contact Centre gives to the citizens of Helsingborg. Hi Martin, thank you very much for joining us today. It's great to have you as part of our podcast series. Martin, how long have you been working with the Contact Centre now? A long time. I came there in 2014, so years and years. Okay, that's good. And where are you from originally? I'm from a place called Nacka, outside Stockholm. I don't speak um, the true Scottish language, but I speak I still have my Stockholm accent, I'm afraid. And it's, I, I guess it sticks through when I speak English as well. Okay. All right. Well, I can't tell enough about the accents, but I have been to Naka, so I do actually know where that is. <laughs> Fantastic. Good. Martin, I know that the Contact Centre is a great resource for Helsingborg's residents. And I really thought it was important to get you on to, to speak about it because we often get questions through HIC from the international community. We're normally able to answer all of them, but quite often I do then forward people onto the contact centre because it might be there's something a bit more specific that we don't know about uh, or that, that the contact centre would normally deal with. So uh, as I say, we, we thought it was a really important thing to have you here because a lot of the people perhaps have just arrived or been here a little while, don't know so much about Helsingborg, don't really know what the contact centre does. And I know there's a massive amount of advice and help there. How long has it actually been in operation? It's been going since 2013, late 2013. So okay. it's about eight years. Okay, so you came not so long after it started then. Yes. Yeah, good. Okay, so the Helsingborg website says that the contact centre answers questions about the municipality and gives advice about several different areas. Please, can you give us an idea of what kind of questions are dealt with there? I can do that. We're like a small mirror of the community in general. So we answer questions in all the variety of the community, such as questions concerning education, schools, preschools, health and social care, roads, parks, recreation, cultural activities. For example, if a lamp is broke when you're out walking, you notice something is broke in the environment, you can contact us and we fix that. We have a network of entrepreneurs that we send out to deal with the things that are broken in the, in the public sphere. And if a trash can is over full, if you find litters any place, you might say, any kind of activity that the city of Helsingborg provides, we know about it and we can answer up about it. Okay, that's really helpful. So it's a good resource. And would people normally telephone or what's the best way of getting in touch about that kind of most, issue? Most people choose to call, call us on a telephone and that's fine. But I will give an advice to the listeners here. It's even quicker if you choose to chat with us from helsingborg.se, because uh, there we seldom have any lines. But when you call us sometimes, especially during Mondays and Tuesdays, very many people call simultaneously. So there might be a delay in answering. But you can mail us, you can uh, okay. yeah. You can also, it's, if, you note, if you visit the Facebook page of Helsingborg City, we are the ones who take care of all the answers when people drop comments or questions there. The contact center are the ones answering them. So there are a number of ways to reach us. Okay, thank you. Oh, that's a real help. And what other kinds of advice can people get at the contact center? Well, apart from help in the everyday community life, we provide eight different special services. We have advisors that you set up a time with, and then you get advice. And I will tell you about this. We have budget and debt. If you're having trouble with money, 
making ends meet. We offer advice on how to cope with financial difficulties or set up a household budget. I have three colleagues working in this field and uh, this is a big one. Energy and climate, we can suggest ways of lowering energy and heating bills in a way that is good for the environment. So you actually save money and you're doing a favor to the environment at the same time. And this service is open both for private citizens or business people or business persons, such as uh, companies. We have consumer rights, and this is to avoid that people become victim of consumer fraud. We have advisors who are expert on the laws of buying and selling with both private citizens and business people. Like if you go to insu- into a shop and you buy something, perhaps you don't know for how long you're supposed to save the receipt. And you may be not sure if you have entered an agreement and what that agreement says. But these experts, they know everything about this. So they can actually help you to save money as well. Now we have uh, an expert in the European Union. If you're curious about the EU or have more specific questions regarding pension rights or what if I become ill if traveling to another EU country? What, what rights do I have? What obligations do I have? She knows all about this. And she's also arranging lectures, debates, and seminars on the EU. Most of them are directed to schools. We have volunteering services. If you like to volunteer your service on behalf of another person during your time off, if so, we can set you up with something to do. And this might be a good way to get to know new people or give a hand somewhere in the community. And you might get friends with someone who comes from another country than Sweden. We also have the Vision Fund. This fund is interesting. If you have an idea for a project you might want to run, something you think can contribute to a better Helsingborg, welfare in the future, a smarter city, something like that. It can be anything. Then you present your idea to the Vision Fund and they might help you with the funding. It's uh, lots of money you can get hold of, up to I think 100,000 Swedish crowns. But not all ideas pass through. It is a special, uh, how do you say, editorial board or a board that scrutinizes the ideas. But some ideas become reality with help from the Vision Fund. We also have senior advocate advertising for especially elder people, people that are 65 years or older. Many people in this age, they find society to be quite complicated with all digital things around. And very much of the services that used to be carried out in another way are now carried out by computers. And this service is to help people around, to make living easier. Uh, We also have a disability advocate that does support and guidance about circumstances if you have a disability, whether visible or not. And the members of the family are also welcome to contact our disability or senior advocates. And that, I think, are the eight of our advisors We have eight all in all, and I think I mentioned them all. Thank you, Martin. So there really is a huge amount of help. And I think it sounds to me that if anyone has any particular query, then they could really just get in touch with the contact centre. And whether or not you deal with it, you'll know the right people to perhaps forward them on to if necessary. Exactly. Today, we solved 75 percentage of the questions concerning Helsingborg City. We take care of that ourselves. And the rest of the percentage, 25%, we send them over to some colleague in the organization. And combined, it's almost 100% solution level of the things we get in. That's really good. Yeah, thank you. Do you know how many people the contact center dealt with last year? I think we had around 200,000 errands. So around 200,000 contacts with people. Inside wow. the city. Yeah, yeah. That, that's quite fantastic. a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that's a huge amount, isn't it? It's really good. And I think I can probably guess the answer to this already, but over 2020, did you see any particular trends in the types of queries that you've been receiving? I think you, you guessed that one, Corona, that's true. Mm. We try to answer up to Corona questions as good as we can mm. and direct them to different agencies in Sweden if we can't answer for them ourselves. But that was a big one. Mm. That, uh, and uh, well, right now it's snowy outside. I might almost promise you that my colleagues get a lot of questions concerning taking care of roads and opening roads. Yeah, yeah. And I was also thinking perhaps financial issues. There must be an awful lot of people who are struggling with businesses or unemployment, not enough money coming in right now. So I can imagine there are a lot of people as well, perhaps seeking financial advice. More and more. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So I think we've talked about the easiest way of getting in touch and that would be chat. Any other tips about how best to get in touch with the contact centre? I'd say if if you have time, it's better to contact us uh, from Wednesday and on instead of early in the week. It seems like the Swedes like to sit up on the weekends and load for the Monday. On Monday, I'm going to contact the community. (laughs) And then um, many people do so. And therefore, we have uh, less pressure uh, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays. So that's that's an advice. uh, But of course, we answer you anyway. I mean, you can call us on Monday if you like. Yeah, that, that's a good tip. I guess at the weekend, we, we think of the things that might need doing around us or just catch up a little bit outside of work. And then it's, it's that list of things to do, isn't it? At the beginning of the week. <laughs> I might add something that ordinarily we're open at, we have our office at Stortorget 17 yes. uh, in the c- center of the city. Mm-hmm. And usually we're open to visitors physical visitors. So you might come to us with your errand as well. But due to Corona, we are closed now for physical visits. Yeah, yeah. It really is about as central as it could be, isn't it? It's uh, it's in front of the steps up to Shannon. And I, I I remember when I first moved here, it was still a post office then, wasn't it? It was quite a good sized post office. That's true. Everyone remembers that. It has stuck in the memory of the folk. It's um, when we say Stortorget at 17, very few people uh, nod their heads. But if we say it used to be the post office, then yeah. everyone knows where it's at. Big yeah. yellow house. Yeah, exactly. Just up a few steps and, and yeah. or a ramp as well. So it's easy for anyone to get there. How many people are there working there? Around 50. And I know when I've come in, you see quite a lot of people sat at desks there. So... They must all be manning the telephone lines, I think. Well, about half of them are managing telephones and um, Mm. communication programs, and about half are advisors. So they don't work as tight on the telephones because, well, Corona has made us change all kinds of things. For example, we used to have uh, face-to-face meetings in, for example, budget and debt services. But mm. nowadays, we only take digital meetings for advice. Right. Yeah. And you, you schedule an appointment with the advisors. I was just thinking about the reception area in there. It's quite a nice, light, sort of spacious room, yeah. isn't it? And quite child-friendly. I think there's a few toys for children. And are yeah. there a few, I, are there a few iPads or screens or something that people can use there? I think we have two of them. But we're actually um, rebuilding the reception now to become even cosier. So it will look different in a few months. Okay, good. You're welcome to visit us then. Oh, I will. I will. And obviously a good time to rebuild at the moment without having people coming in. And I know also from from memory, you've got quite a lot of information, sort of leaflets about things going on in the area. And I Oh, that's true. Yeah, and I, I brought in some HIC leaflets as well a while ago and spoke to a few of your staff about that too. So hopefully if international yes. people turn out turn up, they might uh, remind them that there is this organisation for international people here too. That's a very good advice because we are also an info point. We serve as a light tourist bureau, a lighter agency for tourism. So you can ask us lots of tourist questions about Helsingborg as well. 
And that might be good to know for foreign people who are friends coming this thing or anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I, I hadn't really thought about that, but I now you've said that. I do remember reading recently about the contact yeah. center also being an info point. Yeah, which is really, I think it's useful because I know so much has gone digital, but I do think it's useful it's to have a few places where, you know, if you're just visiting the town for a day or, like you say, you're here with a relative or something, exactly. it's quite useful just to be able to pop in and pick up a leaflet and yes. ask some information. Yeah. Good. All right. Okay. Good. Well, Martin, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today. I'm sure you'll have inspired a lot of people to reach out for help when they need it. Hopefully they've learned a little bit more about the contact centre now. Yeah. And we re really hope that, uh, that they will use it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, -bye. bye for now. <laughs> Thanks again to Martin for all that helpful information. The contact centre is open from 8 to 5 on weekdays, with later opening hours on Thursdays when it's open until 6. You can find out more at www.helsingborg.se. Thank you for listening. We hope you found this useful. As always, thank you to the Vision Fund for their support in making this possible. If you have any thoughts or questions from this episode, you can find us at www.hiconnections.eu. On social media, we're on Instagram at HI Connections and on Facebook and LinkedIn, we're at Helsingborg International Connections. We'd love to hear what you think, so please do get in touch. Join us next time when we'll be finding out all about the City Library Services. Mm -hmm.